Hi friends. Today I am in Coronado. I got called to doggy sit for two really, really sweet dogs. And it brought me back to San Diego, which I mean, anyone who has been to San Diego, the vibes here are just rad. It's, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful place to visit and refresh. And, um, and I was having a conversation today that really uh, excited me and ex inspired me to share some of what we talked about because um, it's really relevant to anyone that's in their journeys of healing, like transformational healing from trauma, grief, and addictive relationships. So the first, okay, I just gotta look at my notes here because I wanted to make sure I covered a few things. Um, the first thing we'll talk about is oftentimes in, in, in our conversations, we're using very big words, especially in the realm, I'm gonna talk about spiritual communities. We use big words like transcendence and enlightenment and duality and dark night of the soul. And right, we use these words, but a lot of times we use these words and they lack substance because there's no defining meaning behind the words. There's a lack of consciousness. And this is what contributes to being an unconscious doer be, rather than being a conscious consumer, a conscious uh, part of a conscious co-creator. That's what I was getting at, conscious co-creator. Uh, and, um, and so I wanna break down some of these words and some of the things that are showing up within my clients, in my own world, and in my, uh, within some of my uh, relationships that are, you know, like what my friends are going through too. So the first thing we'll talk about is narcissism. Uh, it is very prevalent in this day and age that it come into our spiritual journeys to be able to really heal from uh, and transcend. So what does that mean? So uh, I love being by the ocean. And one of the things I really, really love being by the ocean is because it's very meditative, it's very heavenly. Um, and also uh, I love watching the surfers because as we are taking in external stimulus, uh, it, it, has the ability to influence us. That's why I'm such an advocate of minimalism because that is very much identifying your needs and being able to get your needs met. And once you get your needs met, you're living in a space and a life of abundance rather than scarcity. Uh, and so there, and also we're giving, we're giving from a place of fulfillment rather than a place uh, from emptiness. So uh, going back to narcissism you know we use these words to label something identifiable or ar archetypal and in doing that uh, we have to remember that there's light and shadow to everything um, oftentimes the fear can have us focusing on the darkness the shadow aspects of something and take away from the opportunity of learning from the light aspect so when it comes to narcissism you know some of the things that I've really seen is narcissists are really really good at receiving they like have no guilt about well they, it's not true. They do have guilt about it, but uh, that's the shadow aspect of it. But the light aspect is really um, being able to receive without feeling like you owe anything. And that's exactly what unconditional love, cultivating that in our relationships, is to be able to give without any expectations, as well as being able to receive without any expectations. So when it comes to the light aspect of narcissism, um, us as empaths and highly sensitives, we need to practice receiving better because we are naturally givers. We're naturally uh, ingrained. It's innate in us to uh, be generous and be of service. And most of that comes from really living a life um, that has endured suffering and pain. And, and uh, a lot of times when it comes to passion, the teachings are to follow what you love. Well, that's only half the equation. It's really important also to know your pains and to not avoid them, but for us to be able to dive into them so that we can heal, alchemize that pain and be able to then, that pain becomes something that we've um, um, suffered from, endured and overcome in our lives. And so then we tend to attract 
souls in our lives with those same similar pains. And so then we guide them through that process of healing if they're open. Not everybody's open. You can't work with people who aren't open um, to growth and change, obviously. We've seen that. So um, anyway, so other aspects, so that's one of the main lessons that I've seen um, when it comes to one of the light aspects of narcissism. There's other aspects as well too is, um, you know, a lot of times when, uh, when we're in the beginning stages of practicing self-care, it might be more on the superficial level. That's okay. It's just a level always, um, rather than judgment, we always want to look at ourselves and others as we're just in different levels of our growth stages rather than being judgmental or taking, um, each other's behaviors personally. So, uh, so one of the other aspects is narcissism is all about self. Well, we need to be able to take exquisite self-care and we need to be able to identify our needs. Now, if we don't know uh, what our emotions are, what we're feeling, we're gonna have a difficult time identifying our needs, which is why we have uh, the trauma being projected um, and vomited out in this world because um, it's a core need inside of us. But if you experienced abuse, it's very difficult because our throat chakra gets knocked out. So the ability to communicate then we can get blocked. And so that's why some of us write poetry or sing or um, uh, be able to use sound to be able to heal and to be able to communicate uh, beyond words also. Um, because oftentimes when we speak word to word, it goes intellect to intellect. So how can we communicate more heart to heart? Well, that's why music's so powerful. Sound is so powerful. So uh, one of the aspects, the light aspects of narcissism is being able to use that ex the, what you're seeing externally may not be being that narcissist may be in their shadow but knowing what you don't want in your list how we learn we learn in contrast in life knowing what you don't want or who you don't want to be really inspires us into being who it is that we truly are which is light as the sunshine's totally coming on now yeah it just came out of the clouds i love it ah shine that was my new uh detox supplement i just bought today um for my greens to get my greens in thanks to my uh, naturopath for recommending years ago. Honestly, I'm not as good as eating my greens. I work on getting better, but when I travel so much, it's not as easy. And so being able to have a really healthy supplement for, uh, for my greens is, has been really, really a lifesaver. Um, all right, so something else I wanna talk about is, I was kind of getting into it, is duality and transcendence. So these really, really big words, um, a lot of times you ask someone, and uh, they don't really give you a definitive kind of meaning because maybe perhaps they haven't defined it or they're in their own journey themselves redefining it. Uh, we're all in those different stages, but when it comes to transcendence, what I like to describe is metaphorically. Um, that's why, you know, storytelling is so powerful too, but you know, one of the reasons I love coming to the beach is watching the surfers and it really mimics life, these waves, you know, you can really have high, high highs, those are like, you know, I used to be a massive type A. I worked in corporate. I was a perfectionist. I am um, super competitive with myself. I mean, I wanted to save the world. I mean, I just had all these expectations and, you know, I, I was well recognized for it in my career at that time. I had a lot of drive and followed through in those things. However, just like most people experience, when you experience high, high highs, that is an external um, stimulus that is, I'm triggering that high, but that high, that, that joy, that excitement, that adrenaline, whatever that is, that's always within us. It's just that different things, different stimulus um, is gonna have, we're gonna have a different reaction to it. So with the waves, the high, high highs is like when that wave is really high and then it crashes down, right? It crashes down. Well, we have some choices. We can either, bam, it crashes all over us, we get knocked down or we could, if the wave comes, we could swim right, right under it, right? A little bit more smooth or there's many other possibilities, but when it comes to transcendence and understanding it, it's really learning how to be with the highs and be with the lows and the rock bottoms and the hard part and the hard emotions, the, the lower vibration emotions and being able to surf the waves. That's transcendence. That's what we're breaking out of. Black and white, limited, scarcity. There, add color, add vibrancy. There's, there's a whole spectrum of vibrancy to experience in our life. And it does come from the highs and lows, yet the more we experience highs and lows and things that break our heart and open our heart and vice versa, the more we're able to be human beings and vulnerable and be able to really experience the depth of what we're made of. It's easy to love loving things. 
the, ta the, the loving parts of ourselves are the easiest to love. But really, really, the unconditional love aspect comes in when we can love the ugly, messy, imperfect parts of us that we perceive as maybe disgusting or awful or messy or whatever those thoughts are. But hey, when we can really love those parts of us, now we're talking healing into wholeness. Now we're talking about radical self-expression and unconditional love. Now we're getting on a real level reality. Now we're really connecting on ways that we really, really are dying to connect emotional intimacy. Ah, I've seen it everywhere. But the great thing is we're all healing it. We're all healing together. It takes people like me and you to be ourselves and to express ourselves and to not hold back and not to pretend. There's a difference also between pretending and imagining. We use these words, but look up the words to really define the meaning so that that way, whatever words you're using, you are ensuring yourself that you're more in alignment with what you're manifesting. Pretending is all about self-deception. So if you are pretending, guess what that's gonna lead to in your life? Self-deception, because you're unable to see yourself clearly. And that's what your soul is crying for, is to see what everyone else sees, is how lovable we are. And then on the other end, you know, it's being able to Gosh, I could just talk and talk and talk. Um, I was so present, I lost what I was gonna actually say next. Um, oh, also about um, being able to really express ourselves fully so that we can really create more of these conscious relationships um, and, um, and break out of this duality, this kind of like robotic, like in the system cycle of living. Uh, this is something else came up in conversation today I was sharing, which is, you know, so many, um, so many of us on, on certain extents can be like living just in this robotic norm. Um, I call them unconscious doers. And that's because over the course of experiencing highs and lows, fear has creeped in and it's subconscious. You don't know that you've got it. You think, you think, oh, I'm not fearful. I'm courageous. No, no, no. It'll show up. It'll, cause if you're ever too confident in yourself, that's where I'm like, bullshit. Because honestly, we're all human beings and there needs to be a level of uncertainty in our lives at times. Because if there is not a level of uncertainty, there is no space for the magic and the miracles and the phenomenal things to come in that our logical mind can't understand. So if you're living robotically day to day and there's also a difference between habits and practices, you know, a practice allows for imperfection. You get off on your practice or you do it imperfectly, fine, all right, well you go back and you do better the next day or whatever, whatever whatever that practice is for you. Now a habit becomes habitual, which becomes uh, subconscious over time. And so it's really, really important, um, these words that we're using, once again, defining what we're assigning the meaning to so that when we're having these conversations, we're at least having conversation within the same context rather than having conversations of what we think we're having this one conversation about, but because we're, we're defining in our own ways of what that one word means, we're having these, trying to have one conversation, but we're having separate conversations. So, you know, we talk about communication being really important. Well, again, that's one word. What does that mean? Uh, you know, I felt so frustrated so long in my relationships of not feeling seen and heard and valued or being listened to. And so all of those things, I said, well, if I'm not experiencing those things and those are needs, needs are non-negotiable. So I need to get those met. And in order to experience them, then in that case, I need to be that. I needed to be that to others and I need to be it for myself. And these are the beautiful opportunities that we learn from adversity or triggers or difficult relationships in our lives is how to always turn it around and bring it back to really this soulful journey that we're on that no one can walk it for us. We can have our beloveds, our loved ones, um, our angels in our life, all of that. We can walk, have them walk beside us, but no one can do the walk for us. That is giving our power away. And this goes back to um, um, next week, uh, actually this Sunday, um, uh, come join us live in Lake Arrowhead because we're gonna be moving into the third chakra, which is your solar plexus. And that is all about uh, taking inspired action, really connecting and, and, and cultivating a divine community, conscious community of your high vibe, people that you vibe with, that are real clean, clear mirrors. It's very difficult to do work with people that are um, uh, not 
open to growth um, or even on similar like frequency levels. We can all learn from each other, but at the same time, really, really to uh, be able to learn in an environment of, of uh, conscious um, human beings is, is really nurturing for, for cultivating those healthy relationships. Because if you think of the healthy relationships in your life versus the unhealthy ones, um, you know, the, the really healthy ones, that's, they go re you know, really deep and meaningful. Um, and, and, um, and you heal together. Whereas if you are experiencing unhealthy relationships, you're, you're, you're alienating people around you. You're isolating yourself. It's creating separation. You know, I think that uh, in the presence of love, love is experienced by everyone. But if you're in the presence of love and it's bringing people down or it's toxic, um, you're gonna see that in your world, you're gonna see that in your environment. And that's what addictions do. They bring, they bring not only yourself down, but all your loved ones down too. And I've had to get real about myself, especially really being committed to um, specializing um, more and more honing in on my work and my abilities and really, really uh, being of service to heal addictions, grief, and uh, trauma. And, uh, and being able to heal it continues to allow me to heal in deeper levels in my own journey too. So it's very fascinating because honestly, those are the three things on a humanitarian level um, that we need light workers to really be stepping up and really cultivating. How can we cultivate these relationships of being real? Um, I'm all for imagination, by the way. So substitute that pretending with imagination, you know, just like in the world of Disney. Um, let your mind imagine. Um, but, you know, I think the difference between a real amazing um, quintessential like actor or actress is um, is that they're not acting they're just being they're they're so their self is lost and um, and so you can really and it's so applicable to our real lives because we're the we're the stars of our own movie you don't no one needs a bright ass light shining on him to tell us that no we're the light look at let the sun shine on you it's the spotlight you know what whatever I, like let nature let let let, let Mother Earth shine a bright light, you know, feel that because we all are all stars and we cast certain people in our lives to mirror aspects of ourselves that are going to contribute to our growth. So whoever is in your life showing up as a spiritual assignment, the more we resist it, the more it's either going to show up in a different form, <laughs> different body, different person, but same soul lesson to learn. Um, or, you know, uh, you can come to completion. We can come to completion in our relationships that are um, creating, uh, where are not our best selves around. Like, you know, the, um, they trigger things in us where it's easy to blame them and it's easy to project, but everything comes back to ourselves and our journey and taking ownership. I remember this quote has just really continued to remind me, um, trauma was never our fault, but healing from it is our responsibility. So uh, with that said, let me see if there's anything else I wanted to cover. Let's see. Oh, traveling, traveling, traveling. Oh man, one of the greatest gifts of leaving Portland about four years ago and really stepping into my hero's journey of like living in that uncertainty where miracles continue to happen and my faith continues to deepen even more and I'm connected into this flow. You notice that when you're traveling, you experience more synchronicity, um, flow and being out into mother earth, mother nature is just so good for our souls if you're stuck in that robotic kind of living you got to break out in the norm you got to have some spontaneity because that is a place where miracles happen and that is where life unfolds better than what we can imagine so imagine a way have fun take inspired actions um, dream out loud that's uh, you know these are all things that you know I'm a, I'm a teacher and a student of so uh, I encourage it it's, it's brought me so much freedom in my life and so much joy which is way beyond happiness Happiness is fleeting, happiness is external, but joy, joy comes from really living in the now and really being grateful for what is and what is in your life and, and all the beautiful souls that you know are coming into our lives that are really assisting us in our journeys and, and learning about the power of listening, the power of our hearts, uh, being able to be present with each other, those, those real gifts, those real, real gifts. Knowing how important that conversations are, are uh, and knowing how important our words that we're using are uh, I just wanted to take some of these words. Oftentimes in spirituality, we use these words, but again, they lack a, a conversation of really going deeper into what these words mean to us. How are we not only intellectualizing it, but how are we living true to these words? Another word is integrity, you know, honoring our word and following through. That's a whole nother, um, <laughs> whole nother, whole nother topic. 
But for now, wherever you're at, I hope that you are having an epic day too. Mwah. Till next time, I'll see you again soon. Bye.